guys. I hope you're doing well. Um, so we all have that story or that, that person that has impacted us, you know, or, um, is the reason that we have chosen our work or, you know, just chosen our path in life. And, um, there, there's people, or there might be a main person, or there might be people along the way that were like, yeah, I want to do this because of that person, or I want to do, you know, whatever. So, there was um, a gentleman that passed away a few, last week, a few days ago, that I have never met, um, but his story is part of the reason that Dan and I felt led to go into missions, to move overseas, and to teach missionary kids. I, I'm not for sure if I've sta shared bits and pieces of this story on this channel, but if I have, I'm sorry if I haven't, I'm going to share it now. There were five missionaries that were speared to death in 1956 by an Ecuadorian tribe called the Waldani, which translates to the people. And there was, the reason that they were speared is because there was miscommunication. They thought that the white people had were coming to harm them. They had no idea that the white people were coming to share the gospel. And then there was some people in the tribe that were trying to cover up something that they had done that they shouldn't have. And so, in the miscommunication and the frustration, these five missionaries were speared. And the story could have ended there. You know, it it could have just been the the missionaries families that known about it and it could have went flat and nobody else had known would know about it but there was news reporters and it was all over the news it was a big deal um and then not only that the story went on the missionaries were speared to death and then one of their wives and um, a sister of one of the men went back into the tribe and ended up sharing the gospel. A bunch of them ended up coming to Christ. And what they had intended for harm and bad, God intended for good and used in a mighty way. Well, the gentleman that speared to death, uh, Dan's great uncle, so, Nate Saint was one of those five missionaries that was speared to death. He is the great uncle of Dan, my husband. And so, um, the, the man that speared Nate Saint to death went to be with Jesus this past week. And um, he, we're not for sure what his age was because they didn't, like, the tribe didn't keep those type of records. And so he was late 80s, early 90s, somewhere in there. But it was just amazing how, one, this happened. Two, he came to Christ. And then three, he was willing to share his story. You know, most people, they do some, if they do something bad, they do, if they do something that they're ashamed of, they're not willing to talk about it again. You know, they want to push it under the rug and be done. But Minkai was so touched by the gospel and the fact that God loved him so much that he, he wanted to share that story. And the rest of his tribe wanted to share this story. And so they let people come in. They made a movie. There was, there's been a couple of movies. There's been books. And then he came and he traveled around the U.S traveled around Canada and just sharing his story of we acted badly 
because we did not know about God. We did not have his word in our heart language. And hearing that, you know, it's like we have an obligation as believers to make sure that everybody hears and to make sure that everybody knows and has an opportunity to hear that God loves them and cares for them. Because if we don't share it, they're not going to know, they're not going to understand that the ways that they're walking is not right. You know, they're not going to know to walk in love unless they're shown love. And so that was just, his, his story is really what made me sit at the feet of Jesus and said, okay, you know, you've done so much for me. What are you calling me to do? And Dan's known this story all of his life. He has actually met Minkai. I have not. Um, I've met Steve Saint, which would be Nate Saint's son. Um, but yeah, like, to just, in the midst of all of this yuckiness and sickness, and, you know, we have all these people that are hurting and, and sad. You're just like, okay, God, what, what good can come out of this? You can't tell me that there's going to be anything, you know, that'll bring you honor or glory out of this. And there's going to be something. There's going to be people that are going to turn to God through this. There's going to be people that are going to realize that they cannot face this virus on their own. And, you know, hopefully we'll be able to look back, you know, 64 years from now and say, yeah, that was evil. That was a bad, bad virus. But look at all these people that came to know the Lord and look at how, at how they were affected and just, you know, hopefully we'll be able to look at it as something that was used for God's honor and glory and all these people that have turned to know the Lord. And, and it's interesting. You go and you, um, you talk to missionaries today. Ask them, you know, like, what's your story? Why did you feel led to join missions? Like, what does that look like? A lot of them will have a book that they read or somebody that they met, somebody that came and talked to at their church or just a turning point and um, it might not all be Minkai's story it might not all be you know the five missionaries that were speared to death in Ecuador but that, that doesn't mean that they don't have you know somebody that has impacted their life and um, you know has really made them think about okay am I called to do this or that and so um, you know there might be there might be kids out there looking at these doctors and nurses and saying, wow, they're, they're on the front lines and they're, they're risking their lives and they're doing all these amazing things. And, you know, that makes me want to be a nurse or that makes me want to be a doctor. Like we just, we don't know as, you know, we don't know what kids are looking up to us and what, um, what they're seeing and what they might want to be, um, with what they're, what they're seeing and being exposed to. So I hope and I pray that through all this that you learn to walk God's trail, that you are encouraged, that you are uplifted. Um, if you're looking for something to read, The End of the Spear is a great book. Um, through the Gates of Splendor is another great book. They are also on, uh, there's DVDs to watch or movies that you can watch related to those. Um, there's a bunch of different things on YouTube related to the topic and so if you've never heard this story I encourage you to research it for yourself hear hear Minkai's words hear Steve Saint's words and just sit and praise the Lord that Steve Saint now calls Minkai or has called Minkai for years his grandfather and Minkai after spearing Nate's after spearing Steve Saint's father saw the responsibility of this child has no father 
And so it's all the responsibility of teaching him how to learn and grow and become more Christ-like. And um, yeah, it's just an amazing story. So if you haven't read it, please go check it out. Um, that's it for today. We'll talk to you next time. Bye. God bless.